Hello everyone, I'm Peter Drury, Sky Sports Premier League commentator, and this is my Reddit AMA. What's the best line you've ever had prepared just in case that you never got to say? England have won the World Cup. Did you actually practice the lines beforehand when Manolas scored in the Barcelona second leg in the Champions League? The short answer to that question is no, I didn't, because if you think about it, that presupposes that I had a line ready for any of 16 or 20 uh, Roma players to score what turned out to be a very improbable winner against Barcelona that night. I just got very fortunate that evening that uh, a Greek bloke scored in Rome and what happened after that was a kind of stream of consciousness which happened by mistake. Um, my planets aligned very kindly that evening. I couldn't possibly have, <laughs> have premeditated that that was going to happen. Which Premier League derby is your favourite to commentate? That is a difficult question to answer as well because uh, if I pick one, I'll offend the others. They all have their own very, very special uh, atmosphere. Arsenal Spurs is fizzing. The Manchester Derby, of course, is brilliantly rivalrous. And Everton Liverpool, brilliant too. I, I've been lucky to commentate on many other derbies as well. I've done Port Vale Stoke. Let me tell you, that's a noisy affair. Um, there are loads of them and they all have their own very unique and, and special identity. What's the most I just can't believe it moment that you've experienced while commentating? I'm sorry if this is terribly unoriginal, but it's hard to get past Aguero, really, because that was just ridiculous. Although I suppose the last World Cup final uh, had some moments in it which, uh, which pushed back the boundaries of credibility as well. So um, when the fairy tale gets its ending, uh, and it really does feel like a fairy tale, I guess those are the pinch me I'm dreaming moments. Hi Peter, about your eclectic choice of vocabulary, how do you manage to know so many words? Uh, what suggestions do you have for me if I'd like to expand my word bank when I communicate, not just in football, but in life in general? Thank you. What a lovely question. Um, I, I have words because um, I've sort of always loved words and I, I often say that they're my best friend's words. Uh, they've also sometimes over my career been my worst enemy because I've used too many of them um, and I failed perhaps to, to self-edit. The, the obvious answer to how do I get more words is to read, lots of reading, although um, I'm not a big reader actually, uh, but I do like a crossword and that keeps the words uh, ticking over in my head. A good cryptic crossword uh, keeps, your, keeps your head alive and uh, helps, I think, to keep the uh, vocabulary varied. What's the best stadium you've ever visited and why? I think my favourite is the Bernabeu, to be honest. Uh, and again, that might seem a very obvious answer, but it is just a beautiful building in itself. I think an architect would be thrilled by the Bernabeu. I love those white layers, those tiers. I know it's not an original description, but it really is like a wedding cake. It goes up and up into the sky and it feels genuinely dreamy. Of course, when you go there, you know you are surrounded by a, a depth of history um, and by a football club whose, whose players down the years have been you know, the greatest in the world. Um, it's a very, very special place to visit. What would you say are the three most important traits in a good commentator and how difficult is it to become one? I would say number one, to understand that it's about the game and not about you. Nobody turns the television on for the commentator, they turn the television on for the game. The second, I would say, is to be absolutely authentic. Don't pretend to be someone else. Don't do what you think is considered to be the right thing to do. Um, do it because you love it. You want to do it, not because of anybody else or anything like that. Just feel the game the way you feel it. And probably the third, rather dull, it's to make sure you do your homework, to prepare, to know everything you reasonably can about the game. In a perfect world, the commentator should be the person in the stadium who knows, in broad terms, more about that football match than anybody else who's in the ground that day. Um, that's a utopia. I don't necessarily say I've always achieved it, but uh, that's what you should try to do. And how difficult is it to become one? Uh, it is difficult only because you need a lot of luck along the way. You need the breaks, you need to have been forgiven for the mistakes you've inevitably made. Uh, you need a, a boss who's tolerant um, and you need to be given the chance. And let me tell you, I know there are tens, hundreds, thousands, perhaps millions of people out there 
who would love to have been a commentator or would love to be a commentator and who would have been or will be absolutely terrific at it who just haven't been lucky enough. So it's difficult because it requires a lot of good fortune. When you're pottering around the house, is your internal monologue doing commentary like your household chores at the FA Cup final? <laughs> Maybe once upon a time that was true, um, but into my 50s now I've just about grown out of that um, and uh, I've, I've learned to uh, live my life in a different way than just sort of through a lens and via a microphone. Uh, but I don't pretend that occasionally it doesn't happen that way um, because you sort of slip into mode and you sound even more ridiculous. Have you ever had a moment where you've commentated and been lost for words? I know your job is not to, but has there even been a moment when you've been close to that? Absolutely, yes. And actually, it's not the uh, catastrophe that it might seem because uh, if you're lost for words, that means you're letting the moment breathe. In a great moment, in the scoring of a goal, actually, um, sometimes coming up with nothing is coming up with the best thing. So uh, not having a line uh, is occasionally preferable to coming up with a half-baked line. My question is around player names. Some players have very difficult names for English language pronunciation. How do you find out how someone's name is pronounced? Do you ever get to ask the players directly how they like it pronounced? Has anyone ever pulled you up on how you've pronounced their name? I don't think anyone has personally pulled me up on how I've pronounced their name, but certainly within our little village of commentators, there are many, many strong debates about how names should be pronounced. Funnily enough, I have quite often down the years got to ask a player how they'd like their name pronounced, and frustratingly, rather than being definitive about it. Very often players will say, oh, I don't mind if you say it like that or like this. In truth, and this is a, a little sort of uh, industry secret you might not know, but these days before a season starts, at every Premier League club, um, the players stand in front of a camera and say their own name. And uh, we get sent that footage and use it. Problem comes when somebody signs after the start of the season and we don't have a version of that. But we do get guidance now and, uh, and that helps a lot. Who is the friendliest player you've ever encountered in your career? Gareth Southgate, say no more. What's your favorite sport away from football? Cricket. I love my cricket and I spend my summer refreshing the Kent score. And when I get a chance going down to Canterbury to watch a day's county cricket. And when I get a chance going to a day's test match cricket if I can get hold of a ticket. I love cricket. I even still play it at a very, very gentle, humble level. Uh, and that is my great escape. How do you manage to keep composure during games while experiencing so much emotion? I'm not sure I do. <laughs> I get excited, I hope. And uh, that is intended to be a reflection of how the fan feels. What's the one match you didn't get to commentate on that you wish you had? The 1966 World Cup final, which uh, occurred just more than a year before I was born. How do you and your co-commentators avoid speaking over each other? Well, obviously I'm in a new job and I'm about to make new relationships in that regard. So the answer is we'll see. Broadly speaking, um, I think, and I've already referred to this, I think there are delineations. Um, there's what we call the grammar of television, which is essentially while the action is ongoing, whilst it's live, it belongs to me. And when there's interpretation to do, when the replays are rolling in, it belongs to them. That is only a rule of thumb. And of course you, you work around and outside of that. Uh, and so on. Uh, it's, it's an ongoing conversation. It's a commentary involving a, a commentator and co-commentator or co-commentators. And you learn to live with each other. And uh, I'm looking forward to learning to live with that lot. Could you give me a bit more insight into a commentator's role on a match day? Getting to the ground in plenty of time is absolutely critical. Just to settle, to know you're there, not to be worrying about travel, uh, just to have a time to think and maybe to chatter to other journalists, broadcasters, the co-commentators, what are we doing today? Hear the rumors, get a little bit of gossip and, and just feel a, a part of it so that um, you're not fretful when the moment itself comes. And as I say, I like to be sat down if possible 90 minutes before kickoff. We get the teams a quarter of an hour before the public do. We get the team news 75 minutes out and we have that sort of 15 minute embargo period that when we're able to do our preparation around the team news and sort out graphics and all of that sort of thing. Uh, and I like to be in position comfortably before that all happens. Get a good chance to look at the players during the warm up 
and, and feel as if I'm ready to go uh, when they say my name. Do you ever commentate just for fun privately on other sports like cricket, rugby and so on? I mean, like everybody else in the world, I grew up pretending to be Richie Benno, 2-2-2 two, two, two for two and all of that sort of thing. Um, and yes, I do pretend to commentate on cricket. Um, I'm really, people sometimes say, who know me well, don't you ever wish you had become a cricket commentator instead? Uh, uh, to which my answer is twofold. One, no, because cricket can remain my hobby and my escape as opposed to uh, something that I need to know inside out. I'm just a fan and I like it that way. And I can't tell you everything you need to know about cricket. I just enjoy watching it. And two, actually in cricket, very largely these days, you need to have been captain of England before you get anywhere near a microphone. And uh, let me tell you, I was nowhere near being captain of England. Hi Peter, which stadium has the best food? And I can see that this comes from a Tottenham fan who won't like the answer because Arsenal is right up there. Arsenal, Manchester City, very good. Yes, and the Premier League clubs on the whole look after us. Uh, we're very lucky in that regard. Somebody once said to me that they'd take their wife for Sunday lunch at Manchester City, <laughs> which uh, in the press room there. So we're spoilt, we're very spoiled. How long does it take to record enough lines for a video game? What's it like to just record players' names and make it sound like you're in the moment? And how did you find the experience? Truthfully, recording a game is uh, pretty laborious. Uh, it can take uh, a week, a fortnight, depends whether you're doing the first edition or building on the one before, but uh, it's hour after tortuous hour in a studio, shouting names and uh, pretending to be there and very often wishing you were anywhere but there. <laughs> if you could get to replace the narrator voiceover in any movie, which would you choose to be in? Shawshank Redemption. Well, thanks very much everyone for sending your questions in. Remember, you can watch 128 Premier League games exclusively live on Sky Sports this season and highlights of every single Premier League game on the Sky Sports YouTube channel. Enjoy.